For too long have I played this game using the same loadouts again and again. As the great Houdini may be said, I defy the stocks of the world that hold me. It's time to expand our horizons of mastery on... This might take a while. Let me just, uh... There we go. I think the Beggar's Bazooka is my least used weapon of all time. It also changes its dynamic more than any other rocket launcher. Hell, maybe even weapon in the game. What other weapons can you look at your ammo count, see a big fat zero, and that be normal? You have to manually charge ammo that will discharge once you let go of the button, but there's a catch. You can only hold up to three in that chamber before any additional rockets blow up in your face. In my mind, there are three types of people you run into who use this thing. First guy, classic noob who just got it as a weapon drop, tried it out in the store, or god forbid bought the thing. Not really a threat to you, panics when you approach, and probably blows himself up a lot. Second guy, the Joker. If this guy's on the other team, once you see him, it's too late. They do the trick where you load up three rockets around a corner and go into a partner taunt. This allows you to see around the corner and as soon as you see someone, untaunt and you'll blast the first person who crosses your path. The Professional. This guy kicks your ass. You don't know how he does it, but regardless of the random spread of the rockets, it feels like every one goes exactly where he intended. His endless stream of rockets are sure to trip you up. The first thing you'll notice about the beggars is how it completely changes your rhythm. It can feel pretty clunky. If you played it like you had any other rocket launcher, you would be at an extreme disadvantage. With a normal rocket launcher, if a threat shows up unexpectedly, you can just fire and give them a fair fight. With the beggars, you can't be jumped and just say, pause, pause. I just wanted to say, I appreciate you guys taking the time to kill me. You came all the way from Red Spawn. It really means triple rocket sneak attack. So threat, load, fire is too slow and will often lead to death. And load, threat, fire is perfect. In practice, though, this means loading up as you move up to a corner or a choke and blast whatever's around it, even if there's nothing there. But if there is, with a perfect spread, your onslaught will be three times as powerful than any other rocket launcher, and a pretty swift, never-ending follow-up. I mean, this is a 20-clip rocket launcher when you think about it. My first instinct was to pair this weapon with a shotgun, and I think that's a mistake. When playing this combo, I simply didn't have faith in the beggars, and I relied on the shotgun too much. And if you're just going to hit one rocket and use shotgun, why not use any other rocket launcher? I decided to pair it with different types of banners, though I did favor one over the others. So I'll get to that later. Excuse me? Are you talking about the beggar's bazooka? You know, I'm a bit of a beggar's fanatic myself. You know, you can't call yourself a true beggar's fanatic if you haven't embraced the lifestyle like I have, you know, living in this trash can in this literal dumpster over here. What? What What makes the beggar so good? What, you, you coming to me because you don't know what makes the beggar so good? You know, one of the things that makes the beggar so good is the amazing burst damage in close quarters situations. What are you supposed to do against three rockets, hmm? They don't teach that in the manual. There's no, there's nothing that says, hey, how do, how do I defeat myself? How do I defend myself against three rockets? There is no way to defend yourself against three rockets, son. You're dead. Let me ask you this, ladies and gentlemen. You walk around a corner, you see a soldier. Which one's scary? This guy over here with the original? Or this crazy bastard around the corner with the beggar's bazooka, who you know does not give a shit about anything in the game? You see, there's sometimes a few issues with playing soldier. You've only got four shots. Yeah, each shot does 100 damage and has a lot of splash damage and can literally shoot things across the map. Yeah, they're good or whatever, but why Why be limited to only four shots? Why not just keep on shooting? Seriously, it's like a goddamn olive garden in this piece. You just keep on firing and firing. No, I've had enough, please, I'm gonna go. No, here's some more. Hey, I already have my takeout box. I'm already leaving the joint. No, here's some more. I've already paid my check. I've already left my goddamn table. They're in the fucking parking lot giving you more rockets. I won't lie, I'm not amazing at soldier. I really don't get rocket jumping. That shit's unnecessarily complicated. Yeah, I mean, you can study every single map, look at all the wall, all the geometry, all the props, find every single good place to jump off of, every single ramp to surf off of. You can do all of that. Why do that when you can just use the fucking air? You know, a lot of people look at this little stat here about deviation as a downside. I mean, come on, why wouldn't I want my rockets to go where I aim them? Well, truth be told, I know the truth. You can't aim your rockets, okay? I've known it for a very long time. You've probably known it for a very long time, but progress it back in your mind. So here's the thing, give up. That's right, just give up on aiming. Just don't try it anymore. Just just aim generally at their feet, kind of anywhere. It doesn't really matter. Those rocks are gonna go wherever the hell they goddamn please, and it's probably gonna kill that guy. That guy's probably gonna get destroyed. And you know, if the first one doesn't hit work, then the second one's gonna work. The second one's not gonna work, the third one's gonna work. That's right, you have three just kind of going all over the fucking place. Okay, this guy is getting a little crazy, right? Let's just put him back. Well, that was enlightening. 
On to the cons. Let's talk ammo. This is a greedy weapon. You can only get rockets from ammo packs or resupplying. Dispensers and carts are a no-go. And if you're loading rockets around every single corner, you're going to feel the effects. Give NGs the right away, but keep in mind where you can fill up. Even being as proactive and cautious as you can be, you will be caught unprepared. And this weapon really suffers when that happens. Not only does it take longer to respond to threats, but your rockets have random deviation. You will struggle against threats like scouts more than any other rocket launcher. And about that rocket deviation. It certainly can have its benefits in covering more ground and the chaos it can bring, but when needing to fire accurate shots or respond to a threat like a scout, it does more harm than good. This next one kind of fits into response time, but you can no longer do rocket jumps on command, and they are much more clunky to do. That little bit of extra time jumping away will be the difference between life and death. Rocket deviation has major downsides beyond just close range. A lot of soldier boils down to spam, just sending rockets down a hallway or choke. And the beggars makes this really hard to do, especially when trying to spam out sentry guns from a distance. I mean, look at this. Now that we understand the strengths and weaknesses of the weapon, I've put together three builds that I enjoy for you to try out. This first build uses the Beggar's Conch Escape Plan. It utilizes your ability to keep sending rockets into your opponents non-stop. Not only will the Conch give you a speed boost to keep up with your more mobile adversaries, but you'll get a heal on hit extending your conquest into enemy lines even further. Not to mention the passive regen. This next build uses the beggars, the backup, and the disciplinary action. This is more around being a team player, and since your rollout will probably be slower anyway, why not make other members of your team faster? And don't get me started on the battalion's backup, this weapon can carry pubs assisting assaults and defenses alike, all while granting extra base HP. Non-stop flight, beggars, gunboats, and market garden. I see you sitting in the back. I can tell from the look on your face, but mostly your undying commitment to the market gardener uh, that you want to frag. You just want the wind blowing through your hair and fear in the enemy's eyes. Is it really feeding if it was a sick concept? Personally, the beggar's bazooka was entirely unused in my inventory before making this, and now it's something that I find myself using a lot. It's different and zany enough to be worth giving a shot, but it can be aggravating at times. If you want a wacky new way to play soldier, look no further than the beggar's bargain bin. And that's all I've got to say about the Beggar's Bazooka. I hope this inspires you to pick it up if you've never touched it. If you liked the video, please give it a like, and if you didn't, leave a dislike and tell me how it could be improved. Thank you all so much for watching, I'll see you next time on...